In the next few lessons, we're going to cover sections. We're going to talk about what is a section, what's the purpose of it, and how do we even know which sections we want to draw. You know, you see a floor plan here. How did I choose that my sections should be in these locations? We'll talk about how we get them to look correctly on a floor plan, how we use view filters to only show sections that we want to see as opposed to all the sections we use for working, and we'll talk about how we actually annotate sections. So when we go into the view, what information do we need to display? How do we use Revit to uh, properly draft or otherwise annotate this information? One of my professors from grad school said that architecture lives in section. This is important to keep in mind because if you're only designing in plan, you're not fully considering how the space you are creating is experienced. Sections help us to resolve the vertical relationship between spaces and building components, and they're no less important than our floor plans. If you want to get really inspired by beautiful sections, check out Manual of Section by Lewis, Suramaki, and Lewis. I'll put a link on the resources page. In this lesson, we're going to talk about what sections we should show, how we decide that, and then how to draw them in Revit. Let's get started. Our first step is determining which sections we have to draw. And what we want to do is draw sections that convey the most possible information we can give about the project. Another way of sort of determining which sections you should draw is which is the most annoying section you could draw, which has the most information that's going to take you the longest to do. So if we think we're going to need a section here in this area to show this part of the building, I could draw a section right here through this wall and this wall, but just showing the typical wall uh, doesn't really convey as much information as if we also cut through, say, a door or a window. So if you ever have the choice of cutting through a door or window or solid wall, it's always best to cut through a door or window. I'm going to delete all these sections now uh, just so we can start from scratch. So what I'm going to do to draw a section is I'll do SE, I'll, cl I'll left click, I'll drag, I'll left click again and that's the section. I'll hit escape a couple times to close the command. So now my section is in my project. We know that it's going through uh, this wall, this wall, and showing this door. We also want to see what it's showing up on the second floor. So if I click into the second floor, I can see that it's going through uh, this window, which is good, and it's avoiding that wall. If I had, say, for some reason drawn it through the wall like this, you never ever want to cut through a section parallel with a wall. Okay. And let's say I had drawn that section just by default, by right there. That's also not going to convey as much information as if we had drawn through this window. This is a good time to use the uh, paste in place tool. So if I do, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll draw a drafting line uh, in between, say, like this window and this window, and this window and this window. Then if I select these, I'm just left clicking and holding down control. I'll do control X and bring them down to the first floor and do paste in place. I know that if I cut through this door anywhere in between these lines, I'm also going to cut through uh, the window above. So I'll just move that section over. So now I'm cutting through, in this case, the side light. I'll go straight through that door and in between these two lines, I know I'm cutting through um, that window above. So that section is in a good place. So what we have here is we've got a solid wall, we've got a platform framed floor above, and we're cutting through some windows and doors on this side. So that's a good section for us to show. If we go to our 3D view, I have this already set up in uh, with a section box. So that section, like I said, this would be not as useful right here, just cutting through two solid walls, as this section right here which is more akin to what we actually have. So on this side, we've got a solid wall. It's going to show the intersection of the floor and the wall. It's going to show the, f the wall and the roof. And on this side, it's going to show the wall with the door and the wall with the window. So there's a lot of information that we're showing in that section. So let's go back to our plan uh, and find the next section. If we look up at the second floor, remember this area is open to below. So this is a different condition, right? This is going to be built differently than this area. And we talked about this earlier when we talked about platform framing versus balloon framing. So we need a section that cuts through this area that shows the difference. So I can do, I can select my section, do CS to create similar, and I'm just going to repeat the process. I'll click over here, I'll drag down, and I'll click again. And I've got a section that's going through this window, it's going through a couple interior walls in here, and it's going through a wall here. So let me see if I can find a place that cuts through a couple different windows. So there I'm cutting through these transom windows over here, and I'm cutting through this window, and I'm cutting through the floor that's open to below. Let's see what this looks like on the first floor. 
So this is going to be good on the first floor as well because my windows are in alignment. So I'm cutting through a window there. I'm cutting through an interior wall and I'm cutting through a window. If we look into our 3D view, that section, you can see the floor system uh, in our original section comes all the way to the wall. In this section that we just drew, it's going to be closer to right there. So this is a different condition. This gets built differently. This gets experienced differently. We need to show this with a separate section. So that's two sections. Let's go back to plan and see what else we need. You always need a section through the stairs. You've got to show how they connect to the floor system. You've got to show that they meet code, both riser, height, tread depth, and headroom. So you always need a section through the stairs. In this case, it was potential that we could draw this section just through the stairs instead because the floor system is going to be the same at this point. Uh, but there's going to be some differences here, how this wall gets built next to the stair as opposed to this, the rest of this wall. So it wouldn't be a bad idea, I think, to also add a section here through the stairs. So we'll cut one here. This, this will cut through the stair going up on the first floor, and it'll look at the stair ascending to the second floor. So that'll be a good place to do it. There's no window here right now. Uh, it's cutting through a window here on the, on the second floor. It's cutting through a window on the first floor. So that section is in a good place as well. If we go into our 3D view, that section is going to look something like this. Right, so it's it's cutting through this stair here and it's looking at that rise, that run of the stair beyond. And it's also showing how the floor gets cut out next to the stair. It's showing that same uh, open to blow detail. It's showing this balloon framed wall and this platform framed wall or whatever is going to happen here uh, next to the stair where there's no floor. So those are three sections we have to show. And then we definitely need a section somewhere through here because this family room area gets built slightly differently. So I'll just hit SE. I'll click and drag and I'll pick a section anywhere. Um, I just want to make sure I get through at least this window because that's going to be more useful information than just cutting through that wall. If we go back to our 3D view, we can see what that section looks like. It's going to be something like this. Okay, so that's a lot different condition than the other three sections we just drew. So let's go back to our floor plan. We're also going to need some longitudinal sections, right, to show the relationship of building elements going left to right. And I think we're just going to need two here because we really have two conditions. We've got this where we've got the full width of the building with the family room in front of it. And then we've got the building with the open to above and open to below area right here with the exterior wall right here. So I'll just do SE. I'll draw a section through that window and that door that's looking this way. And I'll draw another one going through this window and going through the wall here. And sometimes you can't always get, a, you know, I can't get through this window and that window. That's not the end of the world. Um, so we're just going to leave that section like that. So let's talk about naming these sections and making them look a little bit more presentable in our view. If we come over to our project browser, um, we can roll out sections and they don't have a uh, view folder right now because I just created them. So what I'm going to do is if I select this section here, I can see the view name is section 1. Um, a lot of times these things will be given a letter, so it'll be section A or section AA, or you could give it a full name like section through kitchen and dining room. I like to just uh, name them sequentially with letters. So I'm just going to select the next one in line. I'm going to call this one section B and so on. So I'm going to call this B, C, D, E, and F. I'll pause the video for just a second. Uh, this lesson on YouTube is a free excerpt from a paid professional Revit and Architecture course that I teach. Check out hyperfinearchitecture.com for more details. Uh, in the course, I take you step by step through the entire process of building this house from plans, sections, elevations, structural, framing layout, foundation plans, everything you need to do uh, both architecture-wise and in Revit to produce a set of construction documents for this house. Check it out at hyperfinearchitecture.com slash courses. So I've got my section renamed. Uh, let's talk about the view extents and what we're actually going to see in this section. So anytime you want to go into a section, you can either double click on the leader. You can't have anything selected. If I have this selected, I'm not going to be able to click onto it. But if I have nothing selected, I can just click straight onto that section. You can see now it's in bold. And here's the Revit default section. So it doesn't look presentable but it is accurately reflecting what we have in our project right now. So the walls are in alignment, the floors are at the correct elevation. Um, everything is coordinated, even if it doesn't look good. So we do have to spend some time making our drawings presentable. 
if we go back into plan, uh, one thing I want to do is split it. I don't want my section, it's personal preference, I don't like my section line cutting all the way through the building, and I definitely don't like any lines cutting across my dimensions the best I can the best I can do to avoid that. So if I select my section marker over here, you see this little uh, circular mark. If you click that, you can cycle through the different options. So I can have this solid filled tail, I could have no tail, or I could have another L uh, marker which is going to show the sheet name and number. I like to show it like that. And then I like to have this line split. So you look at the zigzag symbol, the gaps in segment, I'm just going to click that. And now I can drag this separately. And this does not affect what we're seeing in our view at all. Uh, let me close all the views. I'll double click in the section. I'll tile. I'll hit ZA. So here we have our section. What we're actually seeing here is just the representation of where that section is in plan. So we can change a couple things in both views or just in one view. So if I select the section marker, you can see this dashed blue line. That represents where the section is being cropped. That's If we come into our section view, that's this blue line. That's the left and right extents. So if I drag this, if I come over here and drag this to the left, you can see that blue arrow moved, or that blue dash line moved to the left, right? So I think once I did the split, uh, that gap, it detached the basically the crop from the from the actual marker so the representation of where my section line is drawn does not actually affect the section which is really nice because I want to be able to set this section and not have to worry about it shifting if I'm changing just the representation of the section marker so usually I will crop the section the way I want it to be in the actual section and we can talk about this more uh, probably in the next lesson when we talk about how to clean this up but for now, I just want to get the section uh, marker aligned with a small gap, you know, with a small dash line outside of all my dimensions. And we have to go through and do this process for the rest of them. If we, if we sort of drag this one out, you can see that blue dash line will get created right here. That's when Revit is showing me that those are in alignment. So if I stop that one right there, uh, my section is going to be in a line. And it, it won't do it for this part but you can just make it close. But now I know that those sections are in alignment, okay? So before I do the rest of these sections, let's create a new sheet for our sections and talk about placing the section on a sheet and some of the considerations we have with that. So I'm coming to my project browser. I'll right click on sheet. I'll do new sheet. I'll use the title block we want. And I will make this, uh, as we talked about in a much earlier lesson, I'll make this A300 for my sections. I'll give the name building sections. and I will set the uh, sheet folder to be one uh, arc 300. All right, so now I see my section sheet down here. If I click onto it, I can just drag from the project browser. I just drag the section over here, and that section is on this sheet now. If I come into my first floor plan, I can see that section now has the sheet reference and the number reference. And this is all automated, so I don't have to spend time coordinating uh, the numbering of my sections, which is really nice. I don't have to worry about that. I can spend my brain power designing or doing something else. And that changes. So you can see if I change, uh, if I select the view, I've got a bunch of properties over here about the view. Uh, and one of those is the detail number. So let's say I make that 99. If I come back to my floor plan, you can see that's updated now to drawing 99 on sheet A300. So you can go through, drag the rest of your sections onto the sheet. You may need multiple sheets for sections, that's okay. Let's see, I can probably fit three and then I'm going to have to start cleaning that up. But So now I've got section A, B, and C on sheet A300. If I go into my first floor plan, you can see these drawings now are all updated. So you got to spend some time coordinating these, dragging them into the place that you want them to be, uh, making them look nice and plan. So I'm going to do that. I'll pause the video, uh, and then we'll come back. So I've gone through. I've placed all the rest of my sections on sheets, uh, and I have set the gap segment so that they all look nice and uniform. They're not crossing through any of the lines. Uh, but I've also drawn a bunch of other working sections, right? So as you're working in your model, you're going to be doing lots of different sections to 
align the model to see how different things work and connect, but you don't necessarily have to show all of these in your architectural plan. So you're going to end up with more sections than you actually need. So what we're going to do now is set up a view filter so that our architectural plans uh, stay nice and clean and only show the sections that we actually want. And the working plans can have all the sections and drafting lines and all the mess and, and stuff that we need to use while we're actually designing. So to create a view filter, what we're going to do is go to Visibility Graphics. Um, I'll hit VG. You see it's grayed out. That's because we have that view template. So if you don't have a view template, you can come right here to Filters and do Add. We're going to have to go into the view template to do it. So now we get the same, uh, we get the same dialog boxes. We just had to get to it a different way. So I come to the Filters tab. I'll do Add, Edit New, and I'll create a new one right here. I'm going to call it Hide Unreferenced Views. What the filter is going to do is on the uh, plan or section or elevation, it's going to hide any views that are not on a sheet. So with Hide Unreferenced Views selected, we want to check what, um, what it applies to. So we have to find a couple different things. If I hit C, it's going to drop down to the C's. We're going to choose Callouts elevations and sections. So these are the three references where we might see a marker in our plan section or elevation and so we want this filter to apply to these three things. Um, and what we're going to do is set sheet number equals blank. We'll hit OK. We'll hit OK. Now we have to add make sure it's selected and it's on there and we will uncheck visibility let's hit OK hit OK and you see those those uh, sections automatically went away because those sections were not on a sheet so they're, they're still in our project if we come over to the working first floor plan you can see you still get those sections um, visible in case you want to get back to them but now uh, they don't show up in our architectural plan, so our architectural plan is staying nice and clean. If you have Revit Lite, view filters is one feature that you don't get. That's one of the big ones um, that I use all the time that you don't get with Revit Lite. The workaround is if you print, if you go to um, uh, Control P and print and do setup, you can do right here um, hide unreferenced view tags. So when you print, it's not going to print them it's still going to show when you're actually working in Revit so it might be a little bit annoying but you don't have to worry about uh, individually hiding them or deleting them you can just come here to the print settings the only other thing I want to show you about this is that sometimes you're in your nice architectural floor plan and you draw a new section and right away you can see it's not even visible because that section I just drew is not on a sheet and the filter is hiding it so before you click anything else all I did was left click a couple times to create the section if I do right click I can go to view and now it brings me to that section so you can still draw that section um, in your floor plan even if it's filtered and you can always come to the working plan and I think it was one of these two that I just drew so that is the lesson on how to create sections which sections we want to create and how to use view filters in the next lesson we'll talk about how to start annotating this section so it looks more presentable what information we want to show and how we create that in Revit